Hi guys, Granger here and welcome to another one of our videos. So with a recent Japanese tournament, we got to see six new cards for the upcoming Opus 5 uh, starter sets. So let's have a look at some of these new cards and let's have a chat about them. So first of all, Opus 5 comes with three new starter sets. These are going to be for FF14, which is an Earth Lightning deck based around Scion of the Seventh Dawn. FF13, which is the Ice Fire deck built around Moogles from what we've seen. And FF12, which is a Wind Water deck that focuses around Sky Pirates. So we had six new cards uh, revealed for these starter sets, so two for each. Let's have a look at them. So for FF14, we got Minfilia Alisai. FF13, we got Sarah and Noel. And FF12, we have Van and Ash. So quite a few of these are familiar names, that cards that we have seen. FF14 is um, a deck that we haven't seen too many cards out of. So let's dig deeper and have a look at these cards. So first of all, in FF14, we have Minfilia. It is a four cost backup that's got EX Burst. When Minfilia enters the field, you may search your deck for a Job Scion of the Seventh Dawn, forward and add it to your hand. Also, it's got Earth Dull, put Minfilia into the break zone, choose on forward your opponent controls, break it. You can only use this ability if you control five or more Job of the Scion of the Seventh Dawn. So, this is an excellent backup. For at four cost EX Burst, and you get to get a card, so it's effectively a two cost backup, but also it's got EX Burst as attached to it, so it's got a lot of value, which means that this card can be run multiple copies of, and you're going to get value out of it, whether you play it or whether you put it down as an EX Burst. Um, but also it's got the ability to break itself, if you control five or more Job of the Seventh Dawn, um, and that, do that does include your uh, forwards and backups, so I Minfilia mean, does count one of herself, so if you have four others, you can use this ability to just break one of your opponent's forwards, and it is quite cheap, so it's just Earth, um, Dull Minfilia and Breaker. So this is fantastic. Also, it's great because it can also clear up some of your backline in case you want to create space. So you can play Minfilia early on. And then later on, if you do hit this requirement, you can use it to break one of your opponent's backups, clear up some backup space, and also um, allow you to play another one if you would like. So this is a great card. Um, yeah, EX Burst Searcher type cards usually have the issue of that they take up valuable backup space. And also they like, yeah, they're, they, you can't play multiple copies of them because um, they usually have a unique name to them. And this card just inherently uh, solves both those problems. So this card is a fantastic card. Um, obviously it's going to depend on how good the other sign of the Seventh Dawn forwards and backups are, but this card by itself is a fantastic card. And if the other cards are even um, just standard or like uh, reasonably okay, then Minfilia is going to have a very good place in the game. Next we have Alice. So it is a four cost backup. If you control a card named Alphanand, the cost of playing Alice onto field is reduced by one. Job sign of the seventh dawn forwards you control gain haste. So this is a very powerful ability. Any card that can just permanently give guys haste is very, very strong. It means you're always going to be able to threaten being able to attack with your forwards that come out of nowhere. So this is a really strong ability. Um, and if you control Alphanand, then yeah, reduce her cost by one. So she goes from a four cost uh, backup to a three cost backup, which is actually pretty reasonable in cost. So overall, this, the cost effectiveness of this card is pretty good. Um, obviously, it will depend on um, what sort of card Alphanand is. Is he a good card? Is he cheap? Is he going to be expensive? Is he a forward or backup? And this is all going to affect it. That being said, this is the sign of the Seventh Dawn. So it does work towards that Minfilia um, uh, restriction of having to have five uh, sign of the Seventh Dawn cards. But from what I've seen, if the forwards are any good, then this card is going to be a very good addition to the deck. Although it does, it is in Lightning, and Lightning already inherently has Red Mage, a great way of getting um, forwards haste. Um, but this potentially might be a good alternative to that, um, sim uh, because it does have that Scion job, and it also is um, is yeah, it's a it's a uh, backup that you can play um, that also yeah just supports you guys and inherently gives them all haste. So this card highly depends upon. Um, how good Alphanand is and how good the other job of this uh, job scion of the seventh dawn forwards are. Um, if they're if they're even good or on par, then this card is going to see play. And it also depends on like color arrangements as well, whether lightning is going to be required to play this colored deck. Next, moving on to some of the FF13 cards. First of all, we have Sarah, which is the front card of the starter set. It is a five cost forward EX burst. When Sarah enters the field, you may search for one job Moogle and add it to your hand. When Sarah attacks, activate all job Moogle you control and discard one job Moogle, choose one forward, dull it. So this card has a lot to unpack. So first of all, it's a five cost, 7,000 power forward. So it is below curve, but the fact that when you do a player and or express, you get a card back. So it effectively becomes a three cost, 7,000 power forward. So it is on curve in that regard. 
Um, not only that, it searches for a job Moogle, and already we have quite a couple of good Moogles. Um, within IATS itself, you already have um, Mog 13, which is their searcher to search out for other uh, Final Fantasy 13 characters. So this card is already pretty good there. And also there's a ton of other like great Moogles that you can sort of search out. Um, the Wind Moogle is also pretty good. So there are good options for this. So whenever you play, you're probably going to get value straight away and it is the EX Burst. Next of all, when Sarah attacks, activate all job Moogles you control. And this is really strong as well. There are a lot of Moogles that are backups. Um, if they like inherently they're like search Moogles or they're just like those Moogles that we saw from Opus 2, but there are plenty of Moogle backups and Sarah can potentially um, like actually quite easily, I have seen a lot of cases just attack and reactivate free backups. So that's a really, really strong ability. Um, and if you're, and a lot of those Moogle backups do synergize with other Moogles. So they get stronger with the number amount of Moogles you have on the field. Um, yeah, so potentially we could see a Moogle sort of strategy really sort of come into play with Sarah being like the sort of um, the big key forward to push it. The fact that she can search for Moogles, meaning you can search for whichever Moogle you need um, to put onto the field. And also the fact that she can just reactivate them as well. So I could see you playing Sarah on free backups, getting a Moogle, and then on the following turn, uh, spending some backups, put another Moogle backup into play, then attack with Sarah, reactivate all of them. So it's really, really strong. Um, and it doesn't say just forwards, um, so it's forwards and backups as well. So that is to say you can also uh, you can also use your forward Moogles and then reactivate them as well. So if you do want to attack with your wind Moogle, um, you can attack with him and then reactivate him for defense. Also, if you happen to have the, the Final Fantasy uh, FF4 Moogle that draws you cards, then this will allow you to uh, dull it, draw a card, and then reactivate, and then you can use the draw a card again. So this is a really good card that synergizes with Moogles really well. And also, if that wasn't enough, there's a third ability where you discard a job Moogle from your hand, choose one for dull it. So this is just a fantastic ability as well. So if you do get to a point of the game where you have just like a lot of Moogles and you don't really need to put them down, you can always discard those extra Moogles to have a very relevant ability to dull it forward. This isn't limited to your turn, nor is it limited to once per turn. So this is great for both offense and defense. If you are in a tight situation during your opponent's turn, you can use this ability to um, dull one of your opponent's forwards, make sure it can't attack. And on offense as well, you can always just like discard a Moogle to um, make one of your opponents unable to block. So this, is card, this card is very good all round. The only downside about this card is that it is named Sarah. So there will be um, certain other cards that you can't play with. So you can't play um, this card with the backup Sarah. So it kind of locks out one cost snow. Um, and obviously you can't play the free cost Sarah that forces your opponent to discard a card. But this card is actually very, very good and has a lot of versatility and a lot of value. If you play it in a sort of Moogle sort of deck, this card is going to be insanely good. So next we have Null. Null is a four cost 7,000 power forward. If you control a card named Sarah, Null gets plus 2,000 power. So it puts it up to 9,000, which is now slightly above curve. Um, also it's got an ability, and this is a very interesting, unique ability for double fire four, Play the Null onto the field. You can only use this ability during your main phase and if Null is in the break zone. So Null can be played from your break zone every, any number of times um, for paying effectively six CP. Two of them have to be fire. So this card is actually um, a really strong card, um, but it's got a very sort of like unique circumstances to it. So um, the fact that like Null can always replay itself from the break zone means that um, in any sort of later stage of the game, as long as you um, as long as you have null on your break zone, you can always be able to threaten a like putting a null onto the field. And if you do opt to go with the backup Sarah, it means that um, null is a very safe nine thousand power four that you can just play every turn. So especially towards the late game, if you're sort of in a top decking situation and you have, don't have too many cards. And um, yeah, and you just top deck and you don't really get any cards that you can play, you can always discard one of them to help you get Null in. So something to note is that it does require six CP to put into play. So um, even if you do have five backups, you're going to have to discard a card anyways. So this card doesn't allow it to like give you infinite value in the sense that you can always just uh, pay for it using your backups. You always need to discard a card for this because it does cost six. So um, that is something to sacrifice. Um, that is a sacrifice. So effectively what you're getting is a four cost forward onto the field um, and you have to discard a uh, fire card in order to do so. So you basically have the ability to um, replace a card in your hand with null and put it down straight away. Um, and that's kind of what I feel like null sort of represents. Um, so towards the late game, he's just a constant threat. You're always going to be able to threaten um, putting a forward onto the field. So in any sort of more grindier games, and Null I can potentially see being very, very strong. Um, obviously you do have to sacrifice cards for it, but um, yeah, he's a presence by himself. And as long as you have a Sarah backup, or as long as you just have a Sarah on the field, he's a 9,000 power forward. So um, this card is going to be like a card for interesting, more grindier sort of controlling matchups. But in those matchups, I do foresee this card being very, very strong. 
Next, now moving on to Final Fantasy XII, we have Van. Now it's a four cost 8,000 power forward, so that's exactly on curve. When Van enters the field, activate all job Sky Pirates you control. And this does include himself. Um, next, he's also got an S ability, so S Wind Dull. Choose one forward, deal it 2,000 damage for each backup you control. So obviously this gets uh, very good once you get to the four or five backup mark. It means that you can deal a packet of 8,000 or 10,000 damage, and that's usually good enough to destroy a majority of forwards. So it is a sort of, it seems definitely more of a late game card. And considering that wind is a color that really sort of likes to focus on ramping up, getting those backups and then sort of reactivating and using them, that seems like a very, very strong card um, in the wind color. Um, that being said, when he enters uh, when he enters the field, activate all job sky pirates you control. Again, this is forwards and backup, so this can reactivate your forwards. So right now we have a couple of sky pirate forwards. So we have Van, we have Balfour, and we have Redis as the main uh, sky pirate forwards. Currently, I also believe there is only one um, sky pirate backup, and that is Fran. Um, Pinello, um, even though it's it synergizes with sky, uh, sky pirates, is actually a dancer, so it doesn't reactivate her. So um, potentially, um, depending on in the new set how many sky pirates we see on both forwards and backups, will determine how good Van is. If we do see like at least one or two other sky pirate backups, and this card is going to be really really good. If you have this, if you have two sky pirate backups, you can play this card by for effectively two CP because you can um, W two uh, sky pirate backups. Um, discard a card, put Van in, reactivates them. So it's actually pretty good value there. So it depends on how many Sky Pirate backups we see. Um, but considering um, this starter deck and considering um, the set does have a focus around FF12, um, we do. Yeah, it's it's very likely that Van will have a lot more support. As for the second ability, it's actually really cheap. So S uh, S One Wind and Dull is actually really uh, is actually all just really really cheap costs. So in regards to the S, we have so many Vans in the game right now. We've got um, the water van, we've got like multiple wind vans. So we got five cost wind van, we got four cost wind van, we got one cost wind van. So there's so many vans that, um, that you have no shortage for vans to discard with Pyroclasm. Um, and for one wind, one wind is nothing, especially for wind, considering um, that wind has so many reactivation abilities. And just like dulling him, pretty easy, and you're going to be hitting for eight. Um, so you can potentially hit for eight to 10k. Um, in the early game, maybe 6k is like not uh, not that fantastic, but with some of the wind uh, wind cards that can ping for additional damage, um, combining with this like a, with a Balfia or combining it with a um, Hector to push your 6,000 damage to 7,000 damage or 8,000 damage is pretty good as well. Um, so yeah, so this card is pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty fun. Um, it doesn't seem like it's on itself super overpowered, but it does seem to lend itself more to a combo deck. And it does seem that Van has always been a card that does lend itself more to like sort of combo strategies. So it's going to be really interesting to see um, what sort of decks you can play him in. Obviously, if you play him in any uh, like in a um, lightning deck, then you can like some, somehow find a way to on the stack um, give him haste and then use his like um, S ability and then also reactivate him again. So there are very interesting things that you can do with Van, um, and I will be uh, really interested to uh, test him out when he does come out in the set. Next, we have Ash. So Ash is a free cost forward, seven thousand power. So it's pretty standard and it's uh, very similar to the previous Ash that we've had, but. Un, uh, unlike the other Ash that we've had, this card is a card that is supporting your Sky Pirates and it's not just like a standalone bomb by itself. So when Ash enters the field, if you control a job Sky Pirate, draw a card. So immediately that's really, really good value because effectively it becomes a 1 CP 7,000 power forward. Um, and yeah, so that's also, that's already pretty good. Also, it's got uh, Dull, choose one job Sky Pirate, activate it. So, and, and this sort of really builds into Sky Pirate uh, sort of strategy of re reactivating your guys. Now we're just going to have to really wait it out and see which Sky Pirates are really going to synergize with it and which Sky Pirates are we going to want to use that, uh, use that dull abilities in order to reactivate them. So um, it does say um, any job Sky Pirate. So if you do have Fran, because Fran is a Sky Pirate, you can reactivate her. And because Fran can give you Balfour either haste or plus 1000 power, then set, uh, Ash can combo with it to like support it as well. So this card uh, seems pretty solid. Um, obviously it's got a very niche space um, in Final Fantasy in that it can only really be played in a Sky Pirate deck. But depending on how much Sky Pirate support we see in the set, this can be potentially pretty strong. Um, like I can potentially see it also being like combo with a card like Redis. So Redis was a five cost 9,000 power four that gave all your other Sky Pirates plus 1,000. 
but unfortunately had the drawback of he had to attack every turn. So um, he's never going to be able to block. So if you do attack with him, you can always use, say, Ash to reactivate him. So he is uh, available on defense as well. So um, there are some interesting things you can play with this Ash. Although I'm like not really sure that I would rather have this Ash over the, the like other free cost Ash, who's just strong in so many different matchups. Um, but yeah, if you're playing Sky Pirate Deck, then potentially um, we'll see um, how strong the new Ash can be. And that's pretty much it for this video. Like not a lot to talk about, just six new cards, but I'm really, really excited to try out all the new cards and the new starter sets. Um, I'll try my best to do an unboxing and do like more of a video in regards to when they come out. But um, yeah, I'm super excited. So if you have any feedback or your thoughts, please do leave them in the com comments. What do you think about these cards? Um, do you have any questions? Let me know what you think and, uh, and I will have a discussion in the, in the comment section below. Please feel free to thumbs up the video and subscribe if you do enjoy it. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys later. Brand J out.